the mid-January resignation of Labour MP Tristram Hunt has created the need for a 23rd of February by-election in Stoke Central. And it might not be an easy win in this traditional Labour seat. This time the cliché is true. It's a closely watched barometer by-election. To find out more, Well Read Films visited this West Midlands city of about 475,000 people, which has been pulverised by global capitalism. Unfortunately, if you were to draw up a balance sheet of what's happened to Stoke over the last 30 years, you would come away concluding that nothing good has happened. Unfortunately, uh, most of the pottery industry has now gone. They've moved a lot of their jobs out to the Far East. And there's around about 8,000 jobs left in that industry in Stoke. Um, uh, traditionally, Stoke was built not just on pots, but on uh, the local mines the local steel, and the local steelworks. And there's always been a bit of a logistics hub here as well. Um, with the mines, unfortunately, during the Thatcher years, Stoke suffered terribly. A lot of the local mining community here were out for the full year on, on the strike. There was a lot of solidarity locally, but unfortunately because that strike was lost, a lot of the mines went. Um, a couple of pits hung on until the early 1990s, but they too uh, were closed in due course. The steelworks closed round about uh, the late 1990s, that's when it started to get mothballed. The, uh, all those jobs have just completely vanished. That used to employ thousands of people as well. Facing a challenge from UKIP, Paul Nuttall, the party's recently elected leader, wants to get a seat on the Westminster benches. We asked voters if they were buying what UKIP has on offer. Um, Stoke-on-Trent is an extremely deprived area. We're now overrun with zero hours contracts. People are on draconian levels of pay. We've got high levels of in work poverty. UKIP for us, for us are a bunch of chances seeking to tap into division and fear, nothing else. Because we don't think we've ever had anything other than labour instead, right. because it's just pottery, mining, steel, your right. workers, and that's. Right. Spend all that money when you've got a perfectly mod usable, modernish building. Right. Spend all that money, and yet we're shutting hospitals. We've built places, but there hasn't been many new schools built. They built a brand new hospital no. with 100 and odd less beds than the old one had. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, I think uh, for the last 60 years we've had uh, a, a Labour MP within this area who had predominantly a Labour Council in this area. And if you go out, this is Hanley, but if you go out to the other towns, they're ghost towns. All the shops are closed. There's unemployment and people feel that the Labour Party have let them down. Right. Definitely say that UKIP is a change yeah. uh, to the usual uh, politics that we've had. And I think with the EU referendum at 70% uh, in, uh, in Stoke generally, I think there will be a lot of protest votes and I feel that at least we should give the opportunity to somebody else. It hasn't been plain sailing in the national media though for either of the leading candidates, not all for xenophobic UKIP or Gareth Snell for Labour. Not all keep scoring own goal after another over Hillsborough. Snell has been forced to apologise for offensive misogynistic tweets. Once again Nigel Farage has pulled the sulk. And the headline here says it all. Clearly a lot is at stake in this by-election for both Labour and UKIP. Well Read Films assembled a panel of Stokies. One of the main attractions that UKIP are offering is the implication that they will bring money back into the United Kingdom, therefore into local um, areas. So it's the, we'll cut foreign aid, um, we'll stop immigration. So it's the, the implication that costs there will be taken away and that money will then come into areas such as state that are post-industrial and are therefore struggling with employment. Ruth just said the, the, the cancellation of foreign aid but also as well that we pay too much out in benefits to certain people that come into the country as well and people are bought into this mandate. People feel disenfranchised from politics, particularly young people who haven't had jobs for a long time and maybe have second, third generations of people who used to work in, 
industries that have long since gone, so they feel a bit forgotten. It's immigration. I do feel that they use that um, for a lot of people, um, misguiding people. Um, so, especially certain people that have come into the country, they tend to sort of advocate that they have to me to take over your job, so they're playing upon employment. Um, things such as like hospitals, like they're using our beds, benefits, so they do cover quite a lot of that. So, in my opinion, immigration is one of the main factors that play in our people's minds. I think part of it, and I think some of us have already been touched on, it's about the offer that he's making and what he'll do is he'll go on the doorstep and he's offering what people want to hear. And that's money in stoke on Trent, money for the NHS, which, you know, yeah, he's changed his mind on. But it's almost an acceptance from him that the lies that we've heard are acceptable from certain people and from not all. People seem to be accepting those lies. I think we're worried about the day to day and there's this impression that uh, immigrants are coming and taking what little there is to offer in Stoke on Trent. And I think that's what's um, causing some hardship and might result in UKIP gaining power next week. They feel very deceived and very let down, so they feel like it's just a sort of a vanishing city uh, with no sort of future. So that, that's my opinion and other people. So I think that people still want to believe in Labour and vote Labour, but they've just kind of had enough and they want a bit of a change in something that's shiny and new that, you know, probably well won't live up to the expectations or the things that they, you know, fantastic things at the time people were going to achieve, which is rubbish. Many local Labour Party activists have been upset by Labour campaign literature that could easily be mistaken for UKIP propaganda. In one leaflet, Labour candidate Snell promised he would, quote, regain control of our borders, unquote. We, we took the leaflets out on Saturday and we got some people up from London who, who, who looked at them, Labour supporters from London who, who said the same thing, it didn't look right. You're basically allowing UKIP to dictate the terms of engagement there, aren't you? So they're basically running on the idea um, that immigration is a major issue. And in a sense, I've not seen that leaflet, but that kind of plays into that. And it's not really fighting the battle on your own terms or coming up with your own reasons as to why Labour should be voted in. I think it's the wrong method. Um, like I think I agree with them. Um, Sorry, I forgot your name. Brendan. Brendan. Yeah. The fact that, yes, you are playing into the hands of UKIP because we are some, it's like getting tit for tat. So they're doing a certain thing and we're listening to them. I think you just need to address your own identity and what your motive is as a party and what you're trying to achieve. So something like that will personally put me off. Voters in the Stoke on Trent Central by election go to the polls on February 23rd. On the 24th, we'll find out who will be riding the train to Westminster.